So Ruth Ann, talk CDL. That's us. That is us. And today's Halloween. It is Halloween. We are doing a podcast on Halloween, and then we're actually going to a Halloween party. Yeah, we hope you don't scare you. Who would us scare the audience? Yeah. Yeah, It's Halloween, you know. I've got some interesting stuff. Yeah. You know, before we get started, you just brought me this drink. And I I did. I got to share it with the audience. Okay. It's non-alcohol. No. But it's a, what is it? It's like a chai. It's a a hot chai latte with a cap full of pumpkin caramel syrup. It's like freaking and, delicious. And heavy whipping cream. <laughs> I, I, oh, and there's whipping cream in it. I got to admit it, it's like not over sweet. It's got some kind of a crazy, amazing taste where I want to just drink it a lot. Wow, thank you. You're welcome. And you can't always throw that over uh, ice, too. No, I wouldn't. No, this is good hot. I like this. This is good for sipping while we're doing the pod. Yeah. Okay, so. I got my McDonald's Coke. <laughs> you got your McDonald's Coke? You know, I got a lot of serious things today to talk about and on on I almost said Thanksgiving which is my favorite holiday it coming is his up favorite. he's such a foodie he loves to eat yeah so anyways we got a million things to talk about um you know I was thinking about something really serious how many farts do you think are actually in a trucker seat huh that's just too many that I would even want to think about <laughs> I just thought I'd break the ice you ever th- you ever think of weird things like that it's like those seats take such a beating oh I think of a lot of weird things Anyways, I thought I'd break the ice with that. Okay, well. Moving on. I, I, I don't think we needed that icebreaker, but. <laughs> Ruth is not, she's not into that kind of conversation. <laughs> just, a, just a smelly situation. <laughs> I don't want to gross the audience out, but, you know, sometimes every question has to be asked. Okay. You know, why not? If you're all about trucking, why do you, why do you not dabble in everything in trucking? You know, the good parts, the bad parts, the stinky parts. The fart. The farts, money making, everything. We talk about accidents. We talk about everything. Why can't we talk about that? Because maybe some drivers don't want to be sitting there driving down the road thinking, oh my gosh, he just put that question in my mind. Now I can't unthink it. I want to be. How many people farted in the chair I'm sitting in? That's true. There's some some guy right now. Mm -hmm. He just. Guarantee he's now thinking, oh. He he just just got a sign. in my head. Yeah, he just got assigned a rig. And he's looking down between his legs going, oh, crap. (laughs) I hope that didn't happen, too. (laughs) We all know there's been close calls. Well, you you know if, like, there's, like, a little burrito sticker or something like that inside your truck, that guy probably farted a lot. (laughs) Chili. (laughs) Me love the Taco Bell. (laughs) Yeah. But, no, it's true. So, anyways, yeah, I do want to be that guy, but at the same time, I think we should move on. We are. We've been waiting for it. Okay. Well, what are we waiting for? I'm just, it's Halloween. We're here just talking. Okay. It's trucker stuff. Should you start or I? Do you have something? Because I, I, I have stuff. I, we have stuff. Well, what do you want to talk about? You know, the one thing I will tell everybody, I've got the seven best semi-truck brands according to great gear reviews today. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to be reading that. Um, I've got a incident that I read about. Recently, this is really blows my mind. Sometimes you hear about stuff and sometimes you really got to search for it. I just read how there was a trucker killed in um, Pennsylvania because he tried to run through a bunch of cops and they shot him dead. This just happened a couple weeks ago Hmm. up on 80 near um, Jersey Shore exit. No. Yeah. And uh, something else that I never knew. Um, because there was a, a lawsuit going on with a big pileup, again, in Pennsylvania from 2020, they're saying a noise-canceling headphone is one of the factors. And then it goes on to say, and we'll read it, that noise-canceling headphones are illegal in Pennsylvania. It was kind of confusing to me, but that's kind of... I honestly, I, I kind of... Here's my opinion, and this is strictly my opinion. When you're driving, you need all your senses to be able to watch. You need to hear it. You need to see it. You need to, you know, you've got to pay attention with those two senses more than anything, right? Yeah. If you're not hearing, you can't hear if a siren's coming down the road. If it's behind you, you like, even though you're looking in your mirrors, you hear a siren a lot of times before you see it. Right. Well, let's just talk about that incident for a second. And okay. since you're, you're on it, right? Uh, you know, when they say noise canceling headphones, are they meaning like, like a set of beats or something that's over your head and you're listening to music or one of those blue parrots? I, I, I would, I would think a blue parrot is a, a noise canceling, but that's only one ear, I guess. 
you know, when you're on the blue right. parrot. Yeah, it is. You know, I don't think it's, or it could be a two, or some of them two. I two, look it up if you can. Blue parrot is it both? Is it one side or is it both sides? Like for your, you know, your Bluetooth telephone, and you can listen to music on it and everything. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, here's what it says: it says um, truck, and this was CDL Life. Um, obviously, they have some good articles. Truck drivers noise canceling headphones. A factor in a pileup that killed five lawsuit claims. Then it goes on to say a lawsuit recently was filed in Pennsylvania. Court says that a truck driver's use of noise canceling headphones contributed to a deadly crash on Pennsylvania Turnpike in January 2020. It says the civil suit was filed on behalf of 18 crash victims or next of kin in the Philadelphia Common Pleas Court and names. This is a surprise. FedEx Ground. <laughs> I shouldn't make fun of FedEx, but it's it's always like every accident you see there's a FedEx truck in the background. Well, I shouldn't say every, but a lot. Um, FedEx Ground Package System Inc. and New Jersey-based Z and D Tours Inc. As it was a bus, a bus originally wrecked first. Mm, okay. So, anyways, I'll just kind of give you the gist instead of reading it. A tour bus lost control, went up a bank, flipped on its side. Driver was ejected. Who comes along and plows into them? FedEx. They're saying because FedEx didn't hear, there's a warning in the truck that something was in the highway. Fed, the FedEx driver didn't hear it. They got him on camera with these noise-canceling headset on. And so now they're alleging that he was doing this, and it says that wearing a noise-canceling headset in Pennsylvania is illegal. See, to me, I thought the noise-canceling was just canceling for background when you're when you know i mean background noise for the guy that's calling you the jbls or whatever they are Mm -hmm. well i was under the impression that the noise canceling wasn't for the guy wearing it i guess it's i guess it is also if you're listening to music yeah if you're in your bose and and you're wearing them you can't hear anything outside of you um, that's what some of those headsets, that's a noise cancellation headset. You can't hear anything around you except for what's in your ears right at that moment. I, I now see what you're saying. That, that does make sense because mm-hmm. when I put my bows on, I can't hear nothing outside. Mm-hmm. In fact, I have a pair on now. Right. Okay. So. I don't have bows, by the way. Then it would make sense. What are you, what are you insinuating? I got the better pair and you got the cheap pair? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, though. That's all right. All so. right. So, okay. So then then it really, it's interesting, though, again, that, I don't know, is it just Pennsylvania that says no noise canceling? I never knew that. Well, I'm sure there's probably other states. You, we just don't know about them because to, to really go through and look at every new rule or new regulation that each state, each, la, each state has would be very time consuming and you know no doubt you can end up getting confused between the different ones so i would say if you're a, a driver that really drives specifically in maybe a, a two to three state radius then i would definitely check and see what those regulations are or i would probably also just pull up and make sure with the DOT regulations, because sometimes the DOT regulations are slightly different than your standard regulations for drivers because you're a professional truck driver versus your standard little four-wheeler that likes to cause trouble. I can see their point because when we would be going on a trip and you don't like to listen to my music a lot of times, so I would put one headset in my ear and that way you couldn't hear my music, but yet I could still hear what's going on. That's why I like those new ones that you had gotten me that go above the ear, which are really cool. They're um, aftershocks, those aftershocks you got me. Yeah, they're pretty neat. Because my ears are open. I can hear everything, but I can hear the music just as well. And nobody can hear the music. Nope, It's kind of weird. Yeah, it's really awesome. But I like them because you need to hear. Uh, I, I agree. You shouldn't be driving down the road with no not being able to hear anything that's going on outside of your rig, so especially. You, so you agree with Pennsylvania then? I, I honestly, I do because, like that's I said, cool. you can hear. You mm-hmm. can't hear. Okay. You can't hear a siren coming. You can't hear if there's a crash. You, even though you're looking at everything constantly, that sense of being able to hear while you're driving, I think, is extremely important. I hear that. 
I think if I was driving again, I would just want to have the music in the cab. I, I, I'm still kind of stuck on the thing that FedEx has a, 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 an alarm detector to say something's in the yeah, road here, up let me, ahead. Let me pull it up that here. That kind of like yeah. is Keep going. different. I, I, it would be nice if, if that was in every rig. If it was, if that was the case, but I can't understand how it would go and set off an alarm that something's in the road up well, ahead of you. A giant tour bus went up a bank and then flipped over, and I guess it was in the road. But wouldn't it set off the alarm for? Wouldn't it set off the alarm for other? I like just your vehicles or like there has to be something. Well, here, let me just tell you what. It, here's what it says. It says the lawsuit alleges that FedEx truck driver Brandon Stowers did not hear the in cab warning about an object in the road prior to the crash due to his noise-canceling headphones. So they have a system set up, FedEx does, that I guess detects something. It's not look, look uh, at, like autonomous. Like we get yeah, things. We get we get things. Look at look at how your braking system brakes it, automatically when it thinks something's in front of you. Yeah, sometimes there's nothing there and my car will just like ring. And there it yeah. went. So and that's probably what it, not, not thing, that's probably what the warning was is it wasn't moving with him. It was a stopped object, and that's probably what the warning was is like my brake system. I wonder saying. how I wonder how much of advance it really gives you because like eighty, you're coming around curves and you're doing 75, 80 mile an hour on that road, and then all of a sudden it, you get this little a warning. It's almost like. How far is it able to detect something mm -hmm. that far up ahead? What's that? Mine's like so many feet. I think. What, what do we have mine set at? Like I don't know. three or four feet or something. Uh, no, like that. it'd be a little more than that. But I still don't get how could an in cab warning? I'm, you know what? It must be designed to work. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Cause, you know, I haven't driven in so long. It's it's some of the new technology. I'm just not up to speed on when it comes to that, but I guess, like I said, it works just like the autonomous. Anyways, shall we move on? Moving on. Let's move on. Um, how about we uh, mention a sponsor? Today's podcast is brought to you by Carter Lumber. Carter Lumber. Carter Lumber. Attention drivers that have Class A and Class B licenses. Carter Lumber is looking to hire you for a local home everyday job. Full benefit package. They're in 13 states, all east of the Mississippi, in 166 locations. That's a lot of locations. Right. Check them out. They want you to go online. Just go to www.carterlumber.com and then forward slash talk CDL. That's all you got to do. Just go carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL. Let them know we sent you over there. Class A and Class B drivers, you're both welcome there. They want to give you a great job. Ruthann, what do you got for us today? Well, because of this time of year, it's time for accidents, bad weather, all that fun, fun stuff, right? Yes. So a lot of times we've discussed, and especially you have said also, that if it's unsafe to drive, don't drive it. You're the captain of the ship, You're baby. You're the captain of the ship. Well, it poses a question, is a driver in trouble or can he get, it says, are truckers protected from retaliation? For refusing to drive in bad weather. So your question is, is the driver really the captain of the ship? Is it real? Are you really the captain of your ship? Right. Will you are, have are the they, answer for us? I do have um, some of the answer. I, I, I have the trucker's answer for you then when you're done the article. Okay. Well, this is off of um, Overdrive, and it's in their trucking law section. So if you drivers want to go and and review it again also, because it does give some other information and and. Trucking laws, they have a series there in overdrive for it. So it said, if it would be legitimately unsafe to operate, the short answer to the question is yes. If, you, if, it's, if it's truly unsafe, then yes, you are able to not refuse, you are able to refuse to drive without getting any retaliation. Retaliation. Okay. That. Retaliation. There you go. Um, but the attorney... Uh, Paul Taylor of the Truckers Justice Center details just what protections the Surface Transportation Assistance Act offers an employee driver who refuses to drive when conditions would make it unsafe. Repeat the name of that act. Surface Transportation Assistance Act. So Surface Transportation Assistance Act. That's right. the act of saying, listen, I'm the captain. I'm determining it's unsafe, and therefore I'm now taking over command of where this thing is going and I'm parking it. 
Okay. So it says, with winter fast on the way, drivers are sure to encounter more such conditions, particularly in the northern states, sooner than later. The STAA, that's the Surface Transportation Assistance Act, prohibits employers from retaliation against drivers for making a safety call. In truly dangerous weather situation, those protections extend to incidences where a driver refuses to violate any safety regulations, too as also detailed in this video. So go to the trucking law, make sure you make a note of it, the Surface Transportation Assistance Act, because many drivers, if they refuse to drive and say, hey, you're trying to get me to drive this truck that is completely unsafe, I'd refuse to drive it, and the, and the company tries to, to manhandle you and bully you, you can actually do something about it by going to this section and watching the video and pulling up the STE, STAA um, that particular um, thing. Look over all of it. Don't just assume all that you're protected, but look over and see what you are able to get uh, as far as protection because that's something that you need to know, when, it, especially when it's this time of weather and you're dealing with also companies that have not the greatest equipment and you're too afraid to go and switch only because of the fact that, you know, you might not have been there that long or whatever the incidents are, protect yourself. Go to this, this section of overdrive and read it and look up the, um, the act to protect yourself. Cool. That's actually a really nice article you pulled up. I like that. Now, can I give you the, the, my, my view of all that? Go right ahead. Okay. So first off, we're in a time right now where people are desperate to hire drivers. It's, it's really desperation. So I really doubt that anybody's going to force you to do anything knowing they might lose you. Right. That's most, 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 most of the time that is true. Well, that's right now. But it's, Lord willing, people are going to start getting back to work. And when they do, see, it's supply and demand. There's going to come a time where all of a sudden, okay, we got a lot of drivers in the industry and a driver is replaceable quicker. Right now, it's, they're afraid to lose their drivers. But there could come a time where it's going to come back. They get more demanding. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I'm serious now where dispatch, take the load or turn in the truck, that kind of attitude. Um, or some of these smaller companies, whatever the case is. I mean, it can, it, it can right. come back. So we ha we're going to have an, a, a, a flux of drivers all coming back at the same time. Correct. So if and when that happens and, peop and, and dispatchers and companies do get pushy with you drivers... Here's my advice. You're still the captain of the ship. In a dangerous time in storms and weather, if for some reason you think you have a jackass for a dispatcher and they might fire you because, well, maybe you got somebody's got a fleet of 379 Peterbilts and everybody's afraid to lose that because not many companies offer trucks like that. Or maybe it's a really high-paying job and there's always this little threat of you losing your job. I would document... You know, if there is a storm, like you were saying about weather-related especially, hey, you have to keep moving through this bad storm, I would document that. Take pictures. Everybody has their cameras. And, and also take pictures or download or take screenshots of the weather report, knowing this is where I was headed and this is what they were telling me to do. That's number one. And I said no, number one. Number two, if you're tired, and don't get me wrong, the way the hours of service are set up now, it's hard to get tired unless, of course, you're driving at night, your 10 hours is 4 o'clock in the morning. Again, if you're tired and you don't feel safe, you are the captain of the ship driver. Now, I'm going to tell you that right now. If I was out there driving, I wouldn't care what they were paying me. If somebody told me to drive when I felt like, man, I'm going to wreck and kill somebody or kill myself, you know what? Come pick up your damn truck if you're going to try to force me. I, I would... I would shut that truck down. The, the third thing I would say is there could come a time where you're sick. Now, all of a sudden, you got flu-like uh, symptoms. Yeah, it's coming up flu season. Right, and all of a sudden, they don't believe you. Well, when you feel fluish or feel feverish and you're out on the road a 1,000 miles from home, you want to sleep. You're, you're, you're down. Your energy's down. You don't feel good. Nobody wants to work when they feel like crap, crap. And therefore, you may get... They may try to force you to work then. You need to document. I would document that. Stop at a clinic. Get a shot of whatever the case is. Document everything you do, but don't let anybody. All I'm saying is don't let anybody force you to drive when you feel it's unsafe, you're tired, or it's illegal. 
Don't let anybody tell you you have to do it. I don't care. It, it doesn't really matter. It's not... It, Getting fired is not worth your life. No. So in the end, all the articles we can read are one thing, but driver, ultimately, you're the guy behind the wheel. And I'm going to just say this one thing before we move on. Your dispatcher, your dispatcher will never show up in court and go, yep, I told trucker Bob that he had to keep driving. And that's why he ended up wrecking. I forced him. I forced him to drive through that storm. And, and, and uh, guess what? It's my fault. They're never going to do that. Well, so w if that happens, if you take orders and get bullied into doing something you don't feel is safe, then it's your fault. Not It's not the dispatcher's fault at that point. It's your fault. And I don't care if you're so broke and your family's starving and you got to do it to, to make a check. It doesn't really <laughs> shake your head like, come on, you're rattling on here. No, seriously, though, it's true. And I'm not Ruth, disagreeing it's very with true. any of that. It's just you're, 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 I'm just trying to get these guys to where they know they really are. I'm going to say it again, and I'll say it a the thousand more times. The captain of the ship. The captain. Yeah, the captain. Mm -hmm. You're the captain. Well, it, it does, if you go to where I had mentioned about going and checking this, this, this all out, it does give you the necessary procedures for documenting a case where a driver suspects retaliation could be the result of a refusal to drive or a violation of regulations. So they do tell you how to do all that documentation, just like you're mentioning. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the one thing that you got to make sure of, um, and this is maybe one of the reasons why they wanted to get really detailed about it, is because some drivers, I'm not saying all, but some drivers might have said, yeah, it's, it's, it, the weather's bad outside, and it's flurrying, but... For whatever reason, they yeah, don't, don't want to. Don't be a pussy, you know, also, and, and use a flurry right. for your excuse so, not to go So then forward. they want to sit there and say, well, they tried to make me drive and it was snowing out. Buddy, those were snow thingies that everybody can deal with. I not just put in five hours straight. Yeah. So, I mean, you really got to watch yourself, you know, where they consider, you know, look up this act, make sure you read through it thoroughly, and, and just make sure you're protecting yourself in that way, too. We don't want to sit there and use the excuse, oh, the road conditions were too bad, and you know, you've got, and they're really not. You've got, you've got Swift and JB Hunt drivers looking at you like, dude, those aren't bad roads, and they're handling them fine. You might want to look at yourself then. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Check yourself in the mirror too. If you find yourself driving five, six hours, and you think you're putting in a whole day, that I mean, I'm just saying, and don't, don't try to get your feelings hurt and try to bait a company in just so you can refuse running. We're not, we're not trying to get anybody pumped up you know, to act like an a-hole to the company. But we are saying, and we will close this segment out, we are saying don't let them force you into anything unsafe. And that could mean you're sick, you're tired, or you're running illegal, or whatever the case is, don't let them do it. You heard it from me, Troy, Talk CDL. Ruth Ann, you want to move on? Yeah, I also want to say J.J. Keller would be a good company if you're an owner-operator to have on your side, too, when it comes to different documents that you're going to be needing to also for filing. Okay, well, go ahead. Let's go ahead and mention J.J. Keller as our sponsor right now, and we'll mm -hmm. move on to the next subject. Uh, go ahead. Give them a call. Their number is 888-601-2017. If you need any information to come on getting your... your DOT, um, yep. any of your authority, any of your authorities. Everything. It's the, it's the company that will organize you, keep you in line, and... The small dollars that you'll pay them, it's like Ruth Ann always calls them. They're like your secretary. They are. They're your secretary. You can sit there and make yourself look really good when you say, I'm just going to have my secretary take care of it. Right. It's, <laughs> it's, and it's, you don't have to rely on your wife or anybody else. At the end of the year, all the paperwork that you're, you would, you would, if you didn't have a company to keep you organized at the end of the year, you're going, wow, I didn't file this. I didn't file that. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. When, when Keller came and doing it for you. 888-601-2017. Call J.J. Keller today and tell him talk to you. They'll set you. Ruthann, do you have something else? Because I have, I want to read this top seven semi-truck brands. Can we do that? Go for it. So check this out. It's a little article I found. It's um, from a company called Great Gears Reviews. GreatGearReviews.com. They list, now this is their version of the top seven, and it, I guess it's in their order. I just want to kind of read it. I'm not going to get into total details, and do I agree with it? And you know, you don't have to agree with these lists. Um, I probably don't agree with everything in it, but I'm going to read it to you anyways. Number seven, international. And, you know, if they're doing this in order, international is in last. Mm-hmm. 
Um, it is what it is. I'm not going to put international down, but at the same time, I'm just going to read a little bit here. It says Navistar International Corporation, formerly International Harvester Company, is an American holding company that owns the manufacture of international brand commercial trucks, IC bus school, and commercial buses. Workhorses, brand chassis for motorhomes and step vans, and is a private label designer and manufacturer of diesel engines for the pickup truck, van, and SUV markets. The company is also a provider of truck and diesel engine parts and service. Here it is. They are, Navistar, it says, holds an 11% market share in the commercial trucking industry in the United States. So Navistar makes up 11%. It says they have... Over 1,650 employees and over a $10 billion a year revenue in, in, in the industry. Wow. Yeah, it's not too bad. It says they have more than 60 dealers in, in, in 90 countries throughout the world, and they have 1,000 dealer outlets in the United States, Canada, Brazil, and Mexico. Pretty cool. So Navistar, they, 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 pull, they pack a punch in the industry. Sounds like, though, that they might be doing more in the um, other countries. Hey, you know, I, I'm not going to say that I've ever been a big fan of international. My grandfather had one or two cab overs that were internationals, and I liked the truck. They weren't bad. That international that we used to drive for Henry was a, it was a fast, very fast, a wide-open international cab over. That thing was nice. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Next, number six, Western Star. I would have ranked them higher just because I love Western Stars. You mm-hmm. know that. Mm-hmm. And they didn't really give you much about Western Stars. It just says Western Star produces a range of Class 8 commercial vehicles uh, for both highway and off-road use. Western Star specializes in truck, trailer to customer specifications. Every Western Star offers several sleeper box sizes with chassis lengths up to... 486 inches. That's a big... I have never seen a 486... Um, length, uh, Western. So let me see that again. So it says with chassis length. Oh, the chassis is up to 40. I'm thinking it was not, a sleeper. I'm like, sleeper. man, that's a freaking <laughs> tour bus. <laughs> I got to learn. Watch what I'm reading. Okay. Next. Number five, Volvo. Number okay. five. Vol- okay. You know, Volvo is probably the joke that everybody, everybody likes to make fun of. Mm-hmm. Somewhere along the line, people started making jokes about Navistar and people spooning <laughs> but the bottom line is the most comfortable truck i've ever driven was a, a, a volvo and if you look at safety ratings you can't beat volvo they have made their autonomous market i think is more advanced than most so i've seen some good videos on volvo and i think they actually have a solid and they're a nice heavy truck but here's what it says it says volvo trucks is one of the leading heavy truck and engine Manufacturers in the world today, Volvo Trucks manufactures a broad line on highway and vocational class 8 vehicles. Um, Volvo Trucks make up about 10% market share in America. So international um, is about one more. It says Volvo, a Swedish commercial vehicle manufacturer, also owns a well-known trucking brand, Mack Trucks. Volvo owns Mack Trucks. They bought them. Yeah, they bought them years ago. It says... Uh, in the USA, Volvo ranks fifth, but worldwide ranks second for heavy-duty truck manufacturers. So in the world, Volvo is number two. In the United States, they're number five. Hmm. Number four, Mac. That's funny how Volvo is the parent company, but Mac, well, Mar- Mac was always an American-made company, mm-hmm. and uh, they rank number four. It says Mac Trucks is an American trucking manufacturing company and a former manufacturer of buses and trolley buses. I never knew that. Must have been like back in the day. Ding, ding, found ding, ding. it in yeah, ding ding ding, <laughs> and found it in 1900. The Mac Brothers Company is manufactured its first truck in 1907. So they started in 1900. By 1907, they had their first rig. It said its present name um, and adopted its present name in 1922. So Mac Trucks became Mac Trucks in 1922. But the first 22 years, they were called the Mac Brothers Company. There's a little trivia for you guys out there, in case you didn't know. It says Mac Trucks is is a subsidiary of AB Volvo. We know Volvo owns them, which pur- purchased Mac along with Renault. I haven't seen that name in a while. Renault Trucks in the year 2000. Number three, Freight Shaker. 
Yep, Freightliner is number three. It says Freightliner, an American truck manufacturer, and a division of Daimler Trucks North America. The division is known mainly for the heavy-duty Class 8 diesel trucks it offers, as well as the Class 5 through 7 trucks. Okay. Listen to this. I just wanted to say this one thing. It says they sell 190,000 trucks a year. Freightliner rocks when it comes to sales. It says Freightliner sells 190 trucks a year. It says it dominates the market at 40% of all commercial trucks market share in the United States. It says they also employ over 3,000 workers in their MT Holly, Mount Holly, and Cleveland facilities. Freightliner manufactures several models and styles of trucks from, uh, from highway to medium duty to severe duty and natural gr- gas vehicles, they are soon to roll out their new line of all electric commercial vehicles named the Freightliner E Mobility. There will be two models the E Cascadia and the EM2106. Freightliner's got it going on. I'm not that, a. That sounds like a robot. Yeah. EM2106. The Pew 36 Space Modulator. That's what I was waiting for. (laughs) (laughs) Did you have something that you wanted to say? Well, now, from my mind now, there's two trucks left, right? There's two brands. There is two brands. Two brands. brands. We already know those two brands. Kenworth and Peterbilt. So who's number one? And see, that's the thing. I was was giving the drivers a moment to reflect. Well, Two trucks left. And and I know know what they're all thinking. But it's the opposite. It, tr- it really is. Um, let me tell you what number two is. Okay. Then you'll obviously know what number one is. Duh. Number two is... K- no, it's Peterbilt. See, I actually was thinking Peterbilt was number one. I thought, I thought Peterbilt would be number one also. It usually is, but it's number two. Um, here's what it says. Peterbilt Motors Company, founded in 1939, is an American manufacturer of medium and heavy-duty trucks, a subsidiary of Packar, which I think is also owns Kenworth, which also owns fellow heavy-duty truck manufacturer Kenworth. <laughs> duh. 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 <laughs> it says, for 80 years, Peterbilt has supplied the North American commercial vehicle market with the industry's most rugged, reliable, and efficient products. Based in Denton, Texas, which is right above Dallas, Peterbilt manufactures on the highway vocational and medium duty trucks that provide value to their owners. And this is pride to the drivers. Um, not into the word pride. But anyways, it says Peterbilt is an iconic trucking brand. Their red oval design script style lettering logo can be found on trucker clothing, trucker hats, and more. Peterbilt makes up 13% market share. Peterbilt is an iconic and beloved trucker brand which leads us to number one <laughs> number one is k whopper it's right it's the kenworth it says kenworth is an american manufacturer of medium and heavy duty class eight trucks with offices based in kirkland washington a suburb of seattle kenworth is one of three major truck divisions and brands under parent company packarp founded in 1912 by the brothers George T. and Louis Gerlinger Jr. as a car and truck dealership known as Gerlinger Motor Car Works. Hmm. And yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? It says in 1914, they decided to build their own truck with more powerful inline six cylinder engine, the first put into a commercial truck. So the first trucker, the first semi truck ever. It sounds like was an inline six. And that's something? It was a six cylinder. Hmm. So it says Kenworth has has majority grown or majorly grown rather, I apologize, since nineteen twelve with annual revenues of nineteen point one billion dollars. They're almost double of what an international makes, with an estimate of 154,000 trucks sold in 2015 and pushed out Peterbilt slightly. They have about 14% market share. And there you have it, the top 10. Whether you agree or not, greatgearreviews.com, that was their list. And they went kind of basically by sales and mm-hmm. the impact on the market. Right. And you could see, you know, when it comes to being a six-cylinder, 
you got to think about it. Back then, they didn't haul as heavy. They didn't. Well, not only didn't they didn't haul as far, they didn't haul as heavy, and they nothing was. I mean, what was their top speeds back then? And just their cars and stuff. What was it like? 20, 25 miles per. Hour? I mean, it's. I don't know. None of that stuff was. It was all too new in their technology as far as everything, gas and. You know, I would love to equipment. go back. I would love to go back to the early 1900s just to see everything, but trucking especially. Yeah, it would be interesting. Wouldn't that be so cool? Okay, we have National one. Carrier. Yeah, National Carrier is our last sponsor of the day. Uh, their phone number, 888-311-7076. National Carrier is looking for company and lease purchase drivers. They got those beautiful Kenworth T680s, one to three years old. They'll That's take top number one truck, by the way. Yeah, it's the number one. There you go. It's the number one truck. What, what I like about them real quick, in, in 30 seconds or less, their trucks are loaded with um, APUs, inverters, fridge and freezers, double bunk condos. They're the extra big sleepers. They'll lease you a truck. They have their own freight. They don't do broker loads. They're 100% no touch. And they got, like, all kind of regional runs. Call them today, 888-311-7076. Tell them ToxyDL sent you on over there. Ruth Ann, um, I wanted to talk about this other thing here with the shootout just an interesting read if if you don't mind go ahead it says trucker shot killed after a standoff with police this happened just recently it says pennsylvania state police officer shot a truck driver who allegedly drove his tractor trailer at them during a standoff at an interstate 80 rest area in central pennsylvania um, october 5th it says according to the police report Troopers were called to the rest stop on I-80 between the Jersey Shore exit and the Mile Run exit, both, uh, I'm sorry, <coughs> excuse me, it's that chai. This happened at 4.30 a.m. reports of a robbery. So I don't know what was going on there. It said the unidentified trucker, who commits a robbery in a tractor trailer? I mean, it does. Between the Jersey Shore exit and the Mile Run exit, about 4:30 a.m. for ro- uh, reports of a robbery. So, if, if do you remember in Kentucky that one time? In the trucker. Yeah, yeah, the the guy he gets in a bobtail, and he goes. It was in Louisville, I think. He they rob a bank, and the getaway car is a freaking. I think it was a Freightliner FLD at the time, or something like that. Now, listen, guys and gals, a little hint. If you're going to have the getaway car, make it inconspicuous. Maybe a plain car and even take the damn license plate off. Not a tractor trailer with a DOT number right on the side and the company phone number (laughs) right underneath it. I mean, who the hell does that crap? Well, the guy in Kentucky did it. And we're not making fun of Kentucky people, but it did happen in Kentucky. Okay. So anyways, let me finish this. It says the unidentified, going back to the story, the unidentified trucker was barricaded in his tractor trailer at the Clinton County rest stop between Williamsport and State College. Troopers surrounded the vehicle and tried to get the suspect to surrender. Instead, the driver drove his tractor trailer into two police vehicles and several troopers who then fired at the truck. Police reported the driver died from his wounds. Several officers were treated for minor injuries. Now listen, guys. People don't carry a gun because they don't want to use it. I knew lots of friends that were cops and even volunteer fire police. And they loved when them sirens went off. They got adrenaline going. Mm -hmm. Half of these guys, and I'm not knocking cops, but a lot of these guys, they're waiting for somebody to do something stupid. Reach in your pocket. Okay? The last thing you want to do in your tractor trailer is drive towards the cop. I'll bet you that that semi had 150 holes in it, if not 1,050 holes in it. You know, you drive into a couple cop cars, they're unloading guns. Right. And well, it's going to sound like a deadly like, weapon. Your tractor is a deadly weapon. Exactly. Now, that could have been suicide by, by a cop. That's what I'm kind of thinking it might have been. Just I mean, do something stupid and then do something more stupid. And Well, I mean, what else do you expect to happen? I mean, you can't be that. Listen, if you could pass the CDL test, you got to know that driving into a cop is going to get you shot. you got to be at least that smart. Mm, I think they are. I think they are. Ruthann. I've got nothing else. Do you have do you have a joke for these people today? I do. I do. I do. Is it going to be finally funny? 
Shut up. What? No, actually, let's let's let me tell you. <laughs> a, a guy wrote in the other day and said how funny Ruth Ann is and his and her jokes. <laughs> and ever since then, she's been just shining and smiling. You, <clears throat> I, what was I forget his name? I should have wrote it down. But you made Ruth Ann shine and smile. <laughs> and so what she did was instead of backing off on the jokes, she went out looking for more for you. <laughs> so here she goes, Ruth Ann. Without further ado, what do you call octopus twins? <laughs> yeah, it's so funny when people <laughs> tell dumb jokes. I laugh at them because they're so dumb. <laughs> so octopus twins, mm-hmm. um, a pair of eights? I don't know. I tentacles. <laughs> such a whack job. You really are. You're such a nerd. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh, with them. You love it. Hey, you know what? I wanted to also read comment of the week. Okay. And remember, guys, if your comment is 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 read on Talk CDL, and you write in, and you tell us, and we'll see it. This is from the Facebook page. Okay. Yep. What we're trying to do is because everybody, you guys are so inventive of your comments every week. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to give out a hat, maybe a T-shirt with it. And so we're looking over the comments that a lot of you guys write when you know the posts go up, and if it's a really good comment. We then turn around and we're going to give that person comment of the week, a hat, and possibly a t-shirt also. Here it is. We had a, in fact, I took the picture. We were down in St. Pete and we were crossing over the causeway. Mm -hmm. Do you remember I took a picture of? Mm. The guy in the pickup. Mm -hmm. We called it Sanford and Son. Yeah, we started singing and thinking. But that's... So funny, we're coming across this causeway, and this guy has this giant pickup truck load of, I don't know, was he at a junk. yard a yard sale? <laughs> junk. It was just junk, and, and, and his load securement was a string. <laughs> and it was funny, because nothing was falling off, but it looked like if you stayed behind him, you were going to probably wreck from the stuff that was about to come off. So anyways, a man named Eric Holgate, H-O-L-E-G-A-T-E, here's his comment. It says, it's okay because... He tugged on the rope and said, that's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually really cute. So, Eric, write in or call us. But you have Ruth Ann's email. It's ruthann at talkcdl.com or troy at talkcdl.com. Or better yet, contact us on the Facebook page. Hit the message button and send us your contact information and your address and we will send you your free talk cdl hat are we gonna give him a t-shirt too or just a hat oh we could try i mean and ruth ann makes a lot of this stuff by the way just so you guys know she has a cricket and she actually does some homemade stuff so if you get a hat or a shirt from us it really come from ruth ann's little working fingers it's made with love Oh, do you have and anything else? Email me is better because, you know, well, the thing, I don't check the Facebook page at all. Well, I'm on there all the time. So either way, do you have anything else? Word of the day. Word of the day by who? By Word Genius. Word Genius. Guys, I just got to keep telling you this. Ruth Ann is getting smarter because of Word Genius. We do not, they're not a sponsor of the show. We just fell in love with Word Genius because it's making Ruth Ann smarter and it helps me every now and then also. Oh, God. <laughs> <I'm such a laughs> all right. What is the word of the day? Hear it. Trig. Trig? Trig. Like trig, like trigger? Trig. T-R-I-G-G? T-R-I-G. T-R-I-G. Trig. Trig. And no, it's not trigonometry. It's not any of that. It's just trig. So it was from the Middle English 13th century. So it's actually from a long time ago. So let's hear what it is. Neat and smart in appearance. She's looking pretty trig. Mm. I like that. That's actually a really cool word. See? See, I just got smarter. See? I do this for all of y'all. All of y'all. You are looking pretty trig. We're going to a Halloween party. I'm in leggings and a big sweater. Yeah. She's trigging out. (laughs) You have anything else? No. Let's get out of here. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord.